Hi, today is May 6, 2023, and here are my poems for the day. The first one is poem number 743 for the year, Astonishments. A short list of astonishments. Light reflected in the river, a gaping gash cut into the sky, rippling waters, rippling clouds, and later, the flower moon. Poem number 744, the show that went to itself. The show was concerned that people might not show up, that people might not go to the show, so the show slowly, slowly came to the realization that it might have to go to itself. The show put its date into its calendar so that it wouldn't forget to show up for itself, and when the day arrived it was time, and it was time to go to the show, the show went and enjoyed the show. When you have another show, let me know, said the show to itself. I definitely will, the show replied. All in all, it was a good night. The show had made a good showing, and the show had had a good show. Poem number 745, Moments Before. It seemed precarious, and it seemed inevitable that one day something would slip or topple over and break, and the thing or things that broke would either have to be put back together or thrown away. Until that time, things remained where they were, on the precipice. The things knew it too, but what were they going to do? It wasn't as if they could move, so the things accepted their precarious state and embraced the inevitability of their fate. No one and nothing knew that it was only moments before something would happen. Poem number 746, Wonder. I didn't have anything against the music that she listened to. Someone else might have said it was twee, but I didn't even have that word at the time. But one day I put on Maybe Your Baby, or maybe it was Boogie on Reggae Woman, or maybe it was Master Blaster Jammin', and she said, Is that Stevie Wonder? with some surprise, and I said yes. And she smiled with slight contemptuousness and lightly shook her head. And she was driving, so I put on something else, and I still wonder what her problem was with Stevie Wonder, but she's one of the ones who never wants to hear from me again, so I can't ask. Poem number 747, Beach Blanket. The sun coming in from the window was warming her body in a way that it hadn't in many months. May was coming to the end of its first week, and it was coming in strong. She welcomed the burst of heat on her body and on her right arm as she typed away. She thought that maybe she would go out later with a beach blanket and lie under the sun in the park just west of her. But that didn't sound like her at all. And there were some museum shows on the other side of the other park that she needed to see before they came down. Maybe she would go see them today. She'd have to walk through the park just east of her to get to those shows, and she didn't think she would want to lay in the sun in that park. But she thought that maybe she would bring a beach blanket just in case the sun on the way to the museums was irresistible. Poem number 748, Thanks for the Salad. The kid wanted pastina, and I could have sworn I had a box on the shelf, but where the fuck was it? So I ran out to the fairway, and the moment I walked in, my microbiome was like, how about a fucking salad, Johnny? And let me tell you, sometimes my microbiome is a pain in the dick, and it says shit like that vegan cherry Garcia is only four ninety eight. You know you want that shit, but today it seemed as if it only wanted to be helpful. And it was right, I did want a fucking salad, and I'm fucking lazy, so I got one of those prepared salads and some baked tofu, and and the pastina, of course, and a couple of bananas, and that was it. I didn't even go near where the fucking ice cream was. The pastina got made, and several hours later, I had that fucking salad, and I was like, thanks, microbiome, and the microbiome was like, fuck you, Johnny, because that's how we are with each other sometimes. And the next morning, which was this morning, I found the box of pastina that I knew was there. It was on the other side of the blender, and so I thanked that box of pastina, too, for the salad. But the pastina didn't say anything, as if it had no idea what I was talking about. And the last poem of the day is poem number 749, My Microbiome. It occurred to me to wonder, when I eat less, do parts of my microbiome starve and die? When I eat less, I usually feel better, but are parts of my microbiome suffering and wasting away? Should I give a shit about that? Sugar is so bad for you, everybody knows that, but, there, but are there parts of my microbiome that need that shit? 
And should I give a shit about that? What I'm getting at is, what I'm wondering is, how diverse should my diet be in order to maintain proper diversity of my microbiome? To what extent is health a matter of allowing certain aspects of my microbiome die so that others can thrive? Is it better to weed some of that shit out, like cultivating a garden, or is it better to let all of that shit just grow wild? Health is tricky. Do I have to go to a nutritionist? I don't want to go to a nutritionist, but I do want to understand my microbiome better, because sometimes I think I don't understand it at all. What I really need is a translator. All right, that's it. Uh, happy Saturday. Uh, maybe I'll see you at the museum, or maybe I will stay in the park. Maybe I won't go out at all. No, I'll probably go out. Anyway, thank you. I appreciate you. I do.